A little bit massage or something? Let's just say this for leisure and for pleasure. Um, so there would be sex workers who would frequent both sides to try and gain some business. Write me a pretty cheesesteak? Ah, uh, no, because I've shot her. You did kill her in the Bang. end. Well, I mean, they're notorious for that, weren't they? It's only on Sundays that they're open to the public. It is, but it is beautiful. I've been twice. Uh, what do you know about Haile Selassie? Uh, well, I work here. <laughs> These videos were made with minimum editing involved to give you an authentic feel of the city. Hope you enjoy. Inside you have loads of guides. So we're here in the area guys and so this is where they would do the, the, the Abbey, big party right Turn here. Around here. Okay. Look at this yeah, this looks nice. So this is the Roman baths mm -hmm. that was built by the Romans mm -hmm. and it was used for them for their business meetings. But it's like a modern day spa. Mm -hmm. You've got tepidariums, you've got frigidariums, you've got the beautiful waters of Bath itself. Now it's one woman like actually went swimming in it. Really? She ended up in the hospital because oh, it's got all bacteria mm -hmm. in it. Now you can't. Okay. But this is where they came from their business meetings in the Roman Empire. You're going to take them around today. I'm, I'm going to go in there. You're I'm going to go in there. I'm going in there, guys. Have a look around. Don't go skinny dipping, Ace. Okay. Okay. Please. You sure? No, because you'll be arrested and I can't okay. deal with that drama. Okay. I'm going to have to take these on a little walking tour and then when you come back out, we'll, we'll, we'll meet each other. We'll reconvene. They have a little pleasure thing going on there. Is there massages? Well, the Romans. Well, I mean, they're notorious for that, weren't they? You know, they were doing a little the massage or something. Let's just say this for leisure and for pleasure. Oh, and you'll get that vibe when you're in there. Okay, All right, let's go. Vibe. Let's come on, guys. Come have, on. A look. have a look, and I'll let's see. Let me get a Thai massage. Thai massage up here. Bye. -bye. <laughs> I want to also highlight today's Monday so from what I'm hearing from the driver that brought us here that normally Mondays are the days where it can be a little bit light when it comes here so obviously the weekend you're gonna be dealing with massive crowds of people in this beautiful town but right now we got a we got a good thing going for ourselves all right so the entry into this uh, building the bath uh, is around the corner right here so let's check it out <laughs> okay all the tour buses are coming because this was literally just empty right now Okay, you got a ticket. Now you can buy one online, guys, if you want to. I guess it'll streamline the process, but since it's a easy peasy day, pre booked, what is I don't know where you buy your ticket. Okay. You want to buy it? Okay. I guess this is the same place everyone will go if you're pre booked already or whatnot. So here we go. Wow. I think it's gonna be like 20 something euro. All right. Hello. <laughs> Hello, can I help? Yeah, can I get the free special? Mm -hmm. Do you have it free today or no? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. Let me get one. One person. Oh, I get an audio guide, guys. All right, let me get an audio guide so I can know what's going on. All right. Cards. All right, so how does this work? You just put it over our head? Right, you just want to press zero, then the green button, and, and you just listen like a phone, basically. Oh, like a cell phone. Oh, nice. Okay, guys, here we go. Are you a fan or are you part of the, part of the team? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just a fan. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Here you go. Maybe I should have said I was part of the team and then give me a special entry. All right. So we're just gonna see these baths, all right? Hmm. Press zero. And listen, let me hear what they say. All right, guys, let's go in here. All right. It's a clear visual of this place. Oh, wow. How beautiful. So this is the place where they used to do the big parties. All right. Roman people. I can imagine like the top big boys used to come here and politic about um, what they were planning on doing with other countries and everything. This is a place where they would probably initiate those. 
just to be like, yeah, you were a part of the initiation and everything. Right? Interesting. Right next to the church. If they were to do uh, an Assassin's uh, movie or a video game, this would probably be one of those places that would be featured in that movie. Wow. Beautiful, huh? Under the sea. I made it here. <laughs> right. Let's see if it says something. That's what they say. Rewind. If at any time you want to hear these instructions again, just tap C and then the green play button. Enjoy your visit. You got this to work right? I don't know how you make it work. Yes. Um, you have to put the number of the... Oh, the number yes, and press play? The, uh, this one is 29. Mm -hmm. And press... And... In the volume is the typical Roman terrace. Oh, or is it? Thank you. <laughs> this is the view that would have welcomed Victorian visitors to the Roman Baths Museum when it opened in 1897. Look around and you'll see statues of Roman governors of the province of Britannia, along with emperors Claudius, Vespasian, Hadrian, and Constantine. In one corner, there's a statue of Roma, the female deity who is the personification of ancient Rome. Some have thought she resembles Britannia, the symbol of Great Britain. And there might be good reason for that. Bath's manager, Amanda Hart. It would be easy to think that the terrace you're standing on and the museum building opposite you and the columns holding up the terrace are Roman, but they're not. Mm. They are in fact Victorian. Mm. John McKean Bryden was the architect who was selected to design the Roman Baths Museum and Terrace where you now stand. His design has been influenced by the social and political climate of the day and the Victorian perceptions of the Romans. And the Victorians viewed the Roman occupation of Britain as a good thing for all the benefits that they brought. And that includes their sophisticated engineering and the building of roads, drainage and heating. You can see the emperors and generals that are closely linked to the conquest and governance of Britain uh, lining the terrace. But in recent years, this view of the Romans in Britain has started to shift. Hello, um, where, where are you guys from? It's a long story. What part of the story would you like to hear? Greetings. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. Uh, is it doesn't it include the wind rush? Uh, actually, that's part of the story. <laughs> okay. In terms of my parents' generation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What about you? I'm from Miami. Miami. I'm Haitian. I'm Haitian American, though. Haitian. Mm -hmm. I know your country. I spent a month in your country. Oh, you had a good time. I, I hope they show you good for hospitality. I found. I have found the Haitian people to be the most, um, the most gracious and generous of, of any people that I've oh, met wow. anywhere. Wow. Proud and generous and gracious. Are you proud and gracious and generous yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very well. I don't know. I can't record the case here. People, if you ask my ex girlfriends, they'll tell you something, I'm just, something else. I'm just sure. Yeah. So I'm just walking around here. I didn't a, feel a bit. I didn't your see. First day? Your first day? Um, I'm on a tour. Your first day, yeah. And um, huh? Huh? No, no, I'm here on a tour. So. The tour is only on a. Is it a Saturday? Oh. Only on a Saturday and a, only on a Sunday. <laughs> On your on a Sunday, but it is astounding. Oh. What you I would say, try it. Yes, especially since you're a YouTuber. Hey. But when you come back, right. you must take the tour and have lunch. They take you on a tour of the house. They explain the history, why he came here. That is a must for you. They, at some they will, point, if you can come back and do you, it. You need to. You need to go to that house. 
um, because this is part of our, our, our history. Tacular. It's only on Sundays that they're open to the public. It is but spectacular. It is beautiful. I've been twice. Uh, what do you know about Haile Selassie? <laughs> well, I work here. I work here. Okay. So I know a lot. Okay. Oh, okay. Of course, he's true. visited here. When you walk into... Well, yeah, he lived in Bath. Right? So after he was exiled, he lived here in Bath, which is why his house is here in Bath as well. And he had many, many visits here to the Roman Baths when it was discovered and developing into a museum. Yeah. Oh, and, and wow. actually, didn't he choose Bath because he had been injured as a soldier? Yes. And, and he, he could seek treatment here. Yes. Exactly. Treatment. Yes. You didn't know that, did you? Oh, no. Well, now I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you go. Yeah, you'll see more pictures as you walk through when he visited. Oh, okay. And you'll see pictures of, of him here. Yeah. So there's one Where? big one in the main hall. So if you want, I can show it to you. It's just back yeah, there. Yeah, you want to go as a group? Okay. We can all grow as a group, and then I'll bring you right back to where you guys are. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm just looking at this water right here, but I think no, mine's just here. <laughs> I don't know whose is that. That's all right. Where's everybody visiting from today? I'm from Miami. Miami, Washington State. Washington. That's where I'm from. They have good service here. I'm from DC. Yeah. We got good service here. Really good service right here. Oh, we go, we're from the states. I'm from Washington. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna go. Get, we're gonna get the. We're getting the black tour now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, wow. It happens all the time. I think this is the focus on coming in, having the tickets again, and seeing them again. Oh, wow. We passed it, and I didn't see it. You know what I mean? We were just here. I know. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. What is the one thing I shouldn't miss here while I'm here? I mean, it's a lot of stuff, but what is that? At You're least... covering this today. Well, so that's one thing. I'm... You're covering this, so being biased, I'd recommend this. But no, I'm talking about yeah, in this facility. What what should I? Because I'm trying to speed through it. If oh I if you God. could. That's a question. Um, I would I would honestly recommend my favorite part is Minerva's head. So it's the Minerva's head. It's the original bronze head statue from the goddess Sulis Minerva from her temple, which is gold plated. Mm. So it's this picture here that you may have seen inside of the goddess's head. It does look a little bit worn and rusted because it was found in the main drain underneath the city of Bath when excavations were taking place. Oh. But you'll see it in the museum as well, even if you're doing a speed tour. Okay. You'll see it. It'll be like bomb in your face. Literally, you'll see it from like the opposite end of the room. It's in a big glass case. What about that water? Is that the most popular water or is there other water showers here? <laughs> so that's the only water. Yeah. It fills the Roman bath. It comes directly from the hot spring. You'll see the hot spring as well, but most of the time people are taking their pictures and Instagram shots. I heard they had party in there. Yeah, the Roman rendezvous up until the 1970s. What the 
what 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 was the Roman rendezvous? What was that? So they built a stage over the Great Bath, and they would play big band music. Think of the 1940s big band music, and then people would be able to swim in the Great Bath. They would wear togas in the pump rooms and drink wine and eat grapes. That was the Roman rendezvous. Is that all they did? Yep. Yeah, I heard it was a it was an extra party going on. When the Romans had parties, it was a different kind of party. But here, up until the 1970s, that's the party I want you to. Uh, what was the, what party they had? The Romans had. They had all sorts of parties. Mm -hmm. all Sorts what of was the parties? <laughs> well, largely, largely <laughs> I gotta pull it out bath. of her. Largely, largely at the Great Bath, it was completely co-ed. Mm. And being co-ed, they were wearing bathing tunics. So there was nothing seedy happening in the Great Bath itself. Mm. But in the opposite ends, in the men's wings, in the women's wings, sometimes things would happen in either side. Um, so there would be sex workers who would frequent both sides to try and gain some business. And that would happen in the separate gendered sides. Yeah. So there's a there's a locker room here. There's locker rooms, yeah. Um, no, I'm saying for them, they had their own locker room. They didn't have their own locker room, no. But that's where often where they would try to sell their wares. Mm. Kindly put, <laughs> it was in the apoditarium in the changing rooms. Okay. Do you want me to take you guys back yeah, to where I met you? Yeah, yeah. So that way, we got the VIP service. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we always make sure that people see this. But if you, yeah. Walk right it happens all the time. You just you're not paying attention. You go straight right, in and no, you miss it. Right. Yeah, you miss it. You're not looking for it. Yeah. All right. It happens all the time. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. We'll be back. Let's go back in there. Pictures. Just find a colleague. We're happy. Oh, no, thank you. Rachel. Rachel. You are amazing, Rachel. 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 Hey guys, will you come here? Come say hi to Rachel. Tell her what's up. <laughs> you know, Rachel, you're so cool. So Rachel, I sent a story. Have I come done here? <laughs> yeah, um, I studied. I studied abroad here when I was 20. Ah. So I left my university for a semester here, fell in love with the city of Bath, and then went to Bath Spa University, which is another mm. one of the universities mm. here. Bath Spa. Bath Spa. It's another university. And that's where I got my master's degree, mm -hmm. and then I met my now husband mm. at the end of that. And I've been. I thought since. there might be a story there. <laughs> how you how you like uh, Bath? Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. You could not pay me enough to move back to the DC area. <laughs> you could not pay me enough. I love it here. Okay. Yeah, yeah love we it here. do. Yeah, we do. Thank you. We, because I know this is not. This is my first visit. It won't be my only visit. Right. You go back. So these ladies are actually staying here for a couple of days, especially because they wanted to see the the tour. But I didn't get it. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna be coming back here. But. We did get some cool information. So make sure you come here and see it for yourself. Oh, look at this guy. One of the coffins right here. Oh. Wow. So this is how they used to dress. At least this is how the hair was. Why does that look like a black lady though? <laughs> Alright. Okay, so this is what we were just looking at. So I look. So this is how she would probably look. There you go, guys. And there go the mask the lady was telling me about. It's right here. And this is what you were telling me about, huh? Yeah, this is the one I was telling you about. Good to see you again. Uh -huh. You got here faster than me. You got a like, secret shortcuts. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got shortcuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So who's this lady right here? So this is Minerva, the goddess Sulis Minerva, mm -hmm. and she's the patron goddess of the hot spring and of the city of Bath. Okay, so she's the one that runs this the, yeah. this building. Yeah. Okay. So the, the rumor is that she sleeps underneath the spring, mm. and it is her breath as she sleeps that gives the spring its heat and the bubbles. So the water would land on her, her, her like they would, the water would come and just land on the st the statue. So it wouldn't. She essentially they built a statue to her. Mm. But the indigenous people who lived here, the Dobani, they always believed that Sulis was sleeping underneath the water. Mm. And her sleeping under the water made the hot spring hot. I never knew they had indigenous people. Well, uh, the first time I heard about 
<laughs> you guys referring to indigenous people. Well, there were people here before it was colonized by the Vikings and the mm -hmm. Romans and everything else. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was the Dobunny tribal people, the Celtic mm, people. Okay. Wow. Never knew. Yeah. Here we go. Wow. Looks like Jason from um, the movie uh, Halloween, right? Not bad. Okay. So, is there another pool or jacuzzi? There's two pools. Oh, so, where? What's up? Yeah, so when you go up this hallway here, yeah. you'll see kind of a egg-shaped one mm -hmm. and that's the hot spring so that's where the water comes up out of the earth naturally mm -hmm. just like they would in North America and Iceland mm -hmm. places like that so that one's just up this corridor here which you'll head to and then after that you'll go down to the great bath which is the rectangular okay. shaped one so do they see they still be having parties here no not so much now you know that not so much huh no it's not safe to swim in the water anymore but they be partying here huh they would yeah no they still have party here they be doing a little party here, like private party, huh? Every once in a while we'll have weddings here at the Great Bath or, mm. you know, private cocktail parties. Private but cocktail party. They're, they're finished by about 8 o'clock and then they go up and have dinner. I think, you, why are you so red now? You like, you, yeah. It's, I think. The, it's the lighting. It's also warm in here. Okay, so they have private cocktail party. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. All right, let's go see guys. Come on. <laughs> right. There it is, guys. I feel like I'm watching the uh, Gladiator movie. <laughs> All right, I'm walking in the dungeon. There it is. And there it is, guys. The spring water. All right, let me use my other phone to give you a better look at it. So maybe this is probably where they might have found that um, the, the head. Wow. Even now, it still runs. So this is why everything felt damp, and they probably funneled the water to a different place. And it is hot, actually, too, guys. As you can see, they got a steam coming from there. That's steam right there. It is hot. Look at the ground actually, you can see the water being moved. Right here, see it? But it's kind of foggy because of the, the way it's so hot. And then this, there you go. I was skeptical about coming to this place. <laughs> I was skeptical about coming to this place, but after walking around, I think it was a good deal, you know? You know? You're missing what I'm saying. Very nice. So this is the place they would get jiggy, okay? And like the woman said, they would put something in the middle in this area right here, and they have music playing. So just imagine with me, they had a, person over here playing the latest music, the latest hits, fruits everywhere, people just talking and politicking, enjoying the heat, the smoke and everything. You could smell the, the, the steam and the steam just going up into the air. People over there in the, on the top drinking, enjoying their time. You got the soldiers over here, security, just making sure nothing, no funny business was going on. You had very important um, business people and, and rulers and dignitary here too. They say, I think the royal family came in, came in here. They had to. <laughs> they had to. It makes sense that they would. And now that we know that uh, Haile Selaili came here, he might have felt like there was some healing properties here interesting very interesting hmm this is an old one but I'm I, I can assure you places like this exist today all right 
The question is where? If you know where, comment down below. All right, comment down below. There you go. Welcome to my house, guys. $10 million. Uh-oh, guys, I found another VIP area right here. Oh, this was really go down. And as you can see, they have this thing here. I guess this controls the water. People have thrown coins in here. I guess they feel like this place might be good luck. They even have movies here to make you feel like you were a part of the energy. Wow. Wow, look. wing of the bath complex is exclusively for male use. The heat in this small circular room is over 60 degrees Celsius, and the heavily sweating men who sit silently on wooden benches are gazing blankly into space or fixedly at the tiled floor. Welcome to the Laconicum. The room is very close to a furnace and the heat rising from the floor is evenly distributed by the curve of the domed ceiling. Surfaces are hot to the touch, so the men are wearing loose, thin robes and wooden sandals. Flickering oil lamps provide dim lighting, while strategically placed bowls of fragrant oils mask the smell of sweat and add to the relaxing environment. The Laconicum makes the body as hot as possible so it responds most strongly to immersion in the very cold water of the room opposite. All right, guys. We get another look at the springs from here. There you go. Wow. Could you imagine this hall full with people running up and down? Laughter, joy, music, guitar people playing. Some funny business happening everywhere. Hmm. Might have happened in here, this area right here. So, people are doing some strange things for some change. Going down. Look, guys, we can actually taste the spa water. Let me see if I can find out where it is. Okay, so can we just... There you go. But where's the spa water? So it's just down over there. How does it taste? I mean, it tastes slightly different every day. Salty? Maybe. It tastes a little salty? More metallic. Mm. It's kind of... Mm. People, some people say it tastes like pasta water. Like mm. if you were to drink the water that you cooked your pasta in. Mm -hmm. But um, I can't say I'm particularly fond of it. But, um, okay. <laughs> there you go. No problem. Mm. Mm. Okay. Here we go. Guys. How does it taste? Salty? <laughs> does it taste like a party or something? Is it like sulfur? Look at this. This is like look at this. Oh. Tastes like hot water. Like that ran through the earth. Very mineral -y. Uh, There you go. You tasted it like it's wine. What, what do you think? It has certainly some minerals in it. They give it a bit of taste. Seems mm. to be a slight trace of sulfur. Mm. But I'm sure it's good for you. Okay. All right, guys. All right, boys, move out of the way. Look at this. All right, guys, we're done with this trip. Now, let's go look for something else to do. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're back in the main area, alright? I thought I'd show you how this town looks from the front and then work our way inside and then I see, let's see if we can find our 
tour guide. She's actually giving a tour right now. But uh, let's see if we can t uh, tag along with her so she can give us some more insight of this place. All right. <laughs> So I was told by the tour guide that this is a really good place to get some food. So uh, whew, we might be breaking our diet just for the purposes of research. Mm. All right, let's check it out. Very relaxing area, very touristic, and I can see why people would want to come here for more than one day. It uh, has a very peaceful vibe to it. It's a small, comfy, it feels very comfy, that's the word, type of town. Got haircuts right here. Guy getting someone a haircut, okay. Okay. See what else is here. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a bookstore here. Interesting. Mm. Let's, let's check out the bookstore real quick. Bookstore has like with the great acoustics. All right. Oh, it smells amazing in here. Smell like new books. Okay, there you go. All right. The safe keep. All right. Very nice. See if we can find a staff member here who can give us some more insight. Oh, it goes in. What? What is this? More book downstairs. Huh. Wow. And this brings you to interesting area, huh? You know me, I'm always trying to be nosy. <laughs> what type of flag is that? Uh, I'm at the bookstore by the ca castle or the church or whatever. Where you at? Okay, I'm coming now. All right. Uh, okay, all right. I drink that sulfur water, guys. My stomach's feeling, don't feel good. So just in case you gotta try it, uh, maybe skip it. What is that uh, video game called? Assassin's Creed? Yeah, this courtyard, this seems that way. All right, oh. Oh, they're playing some really classical music here. I might have to uh, cut some of this, sorry guys. Very beautiful, very romantic. I think our tour guy is somewhere from this church right here. Let's go see if we can find her. There is she. Oh no, I, no, I got this guy. You got the trumpet guy. Okay. And it's the girl that does the soprano. Oh, she's amazing. Oh, she sings? Yeah, she's just exquisite. I sit down right here under the abbey and listen to her. Now, he's wonderful as well, the trumpet guy. Right, right. They've, they've all been busking. It's the same people all the time that do the busking here. I'll show you around here. Look at okay. this beautiful little street, oh, okay. sweetie. Wow. So you got, like, it's most famous for its fudge. I'll bring you in to see fudge being made in a minute. Mm. We'll go in there. But look down here. So they would have filmed a lot of Bridgerton. Do you know the Bridgerton show? No. The boys won't, the girls won't. All the girls will know what I'm talking uh, okay. about. Okay. It's uh, quite raunchy, actually, for a periodic drama. So they would have filmed it all around here. And it's all the girls in the beautiful hoop dresses. And oh. They, it's a fabulous drama. It was on a Netflix. There's three series in it. So they filmed a lot of Bridgerton around here, but this is Sally Lund's bun shop over here. This is the oldest tea house in Britain, they say. Oh. There's always a queue inside the door, though. Look, come in and have a look. It's right up here. There's always people trying to get in, but no, it's not too bad today. It's actually quite I guess quite Mondays quiet. is probably... Mondays, and at this time of the year as well, we're in the kind of lull now. Next week is very busy again. So you came for a very good week. Okay, awesome. Because I have a lot of private tours. Established in 1680. Wow. Isn't that incredible? So they come to get some tea? This particular bun was very popular with the royal family and the gentry. So it's like a sweet bun. It's like um, 
I guess it'd be equivalent of like what you would call a biscuit, something like that maybe. Just waiting for these ladies to get the food. You'll see them no. in the window here. Okay. Wow, awesome. it's... No, they don't have any of the bonnets in the window, but they're... Uh, I don't know how to describe it here. I'm not a I see people eating uh, like a bun with uh, a sugary bun. Like a cinnamon bun. Yeah, yeah. it's like a cinnamon yeah, bun. Mm -hmm. okay, so there it is then. The oldest house in Bath. The eating house was 1680, but 1482 Sally alone lived here. So that's kind of one of the highlights for people when they come to Bath. But let me take you around here. All right, cool. I'll show you some of the. This is really old school Georgian, but it was very. Uh, I met uh, uh, Rock Saxon was the bane of my life. <laughs> Can I give you a bit of advice, right. you guys? If you come here and you go on the tube, take your Rock Sacks off. Nothing annoys Londoners more when they're taking the underground than if it's really busy and there's someone with a big, huge Rock Sack taking up three spaces. What is a Rock Sack? I don't know. Oh, a knapsack, a backpack. Oh. Sorry, you call it a backpack, we call it a Rock Sack. <laughs> I forget too sometimes the American term. <laughs> It's crazy. Right. So this area mm -hmm. here. Somebody told me that recently that this was a hanging tree. <gasps> was used for execution. Mm. I couldn't find any information on it. I've tried to look into it because I love it. They have a sign on there. It's nothing to do with the execution though. Mm. Um, but look at this gorgeous square. I mean it's like stepping back in time, isn't it? Right. This is where they film now a lot of Bridgerton. The girls might recognize it. It was the tea rooms in Bridgerton. These guys are wicked. These are oh, these, they don't uh, give it. The birds are this. Around, I'm uh, telling you, they run in the city. I was walking down here one day, and this poor little girl in her school uniform. She comes out with a, a little one-pound burger from McDonald's. Oh. Next thing, he swoops, and it is gone. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> shit there. Excuse my language. Sorry. <laughs> So these are all little Georgian tea rooms, but let's go over to the little, um, I want to bring you up to the Jane Austen Museum. I want you to meet my friend, the most photographed man in Bath. <laughs> this is just a very casual walk today now. Okay guys, let's do it. This is not as intense as Jack the Ripper. Oh no, 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 no. But look at that view, isn't that amazing there? Yeah. So I met a couple here who been here for a couple of days so people come here for oh, and they stay overnight I often have like maybe 40 or 50 on a day tour with day mm. tours London and some people will just say right that's it I'm staying the night they won't come back to London but it's actually very accessible by train as well oh okay yeah, it's only, um, a two and a half hour journey by train from London straight to Bath and the train station is just at the back of the city it's so small Bath it's right. really small so you can navigate your way around at all times right you know? Are you impressed with it? Oh, well, I'm you impressed. I, 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 I didn't think... you think... haven't seen before. No, I, well, I've seen the concept. The smaller town, comfier. But they're all different. This one's different. You know, I, I like it. It's just, it's elegant. Right. People here are very nice too. Uh-huh. They're lovely. And they're very welcoming a tourist. This now, is a church? This is Bath Abbey, yeah. Uh, there's been a church on that site since 973 AD. That particular church was established in 1499. But when Henry VIII mm -hmm. disestablished the Catholic Church, or the dissolution of the monasteries during the period of the Reformation, it went into severe disrepair. So it was Elizabeth I actually who ordered it to be restored to its former glory. But there was a bishop, his name was Bishop Oliver King. Right. Now this guy was a bit of an egomaniac, right? A bit of a narcissist. Right. So let me come over here and I'll show you something. He had a dream. Right. That Jesus told, gave him a, he had a dream, and a, which he took as a sign from God to build an abbey. And that dream to, told him in his dream about angels ascending and descending a ladder. Oh, I see that. Do you see them descending? Well, that's quite a demonic symbol. So wow. people weren't too happy about it. It is quite creepy if you look at the other one descending down there as well. So basically, he got his way there, but then he decided he was going to put a picture of himself. He's going to put a statue of himself on oh. the church. Now the people of Bath were absolutely, they put their foot down. They said, that is not going to happen. No way. But being the man he was, Bishop Oliver King, quite the narcissist, he still got around it. He didn't put a statue up, but what he did was... He 
put up the bishop's hat, the olive tree, oh. and the crown for king. So he's still got his name up there indirectly, Bishop Oliver King. What? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And the choir. It was really good. Oh my god, this spectacular, professional, high-pitched, you know those beautiful choir? All right, guys, so this to give you an idea of what she was talking about. She's talking about this, like the climbing of uh, the angels and the descending of one. You can see why people would be like, why would you put that there? And then his huge ego about putting his name on it. It actually reminds me of a novel I read called Bleach, not Bleach, uh, Berserk where there was a guy who thought he was um, greater than God. And this guy reminds me of it. At least the story does. I hope they're making the fudge now. The last time I came here, they was making a big slab of fudge. Oh, yes, they are. Let's go have it. All right, wow. Do you want a sample some? Why not? Okay. Look at that. Look at the caramelization of it. Look. The amount of sugar and butter. Look at what's in fudge. You love that, do you? <laughs> it scared me actually when they were making it. Oh, yeah? You can get samples. In oh, here. well, let's get a sample. Mmm. Alright. Excuse me. It feels warm. It, feels, it smells like we're in a candle shop. Right. The smell in here is so good. Ten minutes, ten minutes here, ten minutes to cool down, then ten minutes to work it, and then about ten minutes to slice. Mm. So ten minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes. Yeah. Okay, we got it. It's when they lay it out. It's weird. I don't know how they do it. But oh, so he's gonna lay it out, and he's gonna lay it out now, and he'll swish it and swish it. I don't know what he's doing, but he's making it. These are. Does that look like pistachio fudge? I think. Oh, okay. Can you try some there. Yeah, try one. I'm gonna try the sea salt caramel you should try, it's really good. Yeah, Alright. Are you getting one? No, I'm not. No, I don't need one. Oh, can we have a little piece here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. I'm a feeder. That's what I do. Oh. Try a bit there. All right. Caramel's just like a classic caramel, you know, you can't really get wrong. Sea salt one is magnificent. That's good stuff, isn't it? I've got it Wow. Have you had any lunch or anything yet? No. Mama, don't get your... Well, it's also very famous for it's what's called a Cornish pasta. Okay. Have a look here. Now, we'll look at a bit more architecture shortly in a minute, but I just want to show you up these lovely little side streets. Every store in Bath claims to be the best Cornish pasta in Bath. Mm. Oh wow, it just opens up some more. How Isn't big is lovely? this city? It's pretty big. I mean, we're going to go to the top of the town because I want to show you the architectural masterpieces of John with the Elder. Okay, cool. And his son, John with the Younger. He took over when his father passed away. But up here is the pasty store. Mmm. Now, it's like, uh, did you not try with, oh, you didn't get anything in Stonehenge, did you? Um, no, I didn't eat anything in Stonehenge. Okay. We didn't really have time, did we? Yeah, right. um, I love to go charity shopping here. You always find these amazing little vintage finds. There's a lot of money in Bath as well. Mm -hmm. Old school English money. Good, so you can find a good deal here, possibly. Oh yeah, if you're charity shows. Uh, people will donate their clothes to charity. People. I love sh thrift shopping. Oh yeah. These are the Cornish fantasies now. Mm -hmm. These. So this is what a Cornish pasty looks mm. like. Now that's traditional, so that's like beef and onion and potato and carrots, etc. But you can get like loads of fabulous on large steak and ale. There's a chicken, bacon and chorizo pasty. You should try one of them, lamb and mint. They're really filling though. We have had a sausage roll. This is a sausage roll as well. It's kind of like the equivalent to your pigs in blanket. Okay. I think. Oh, sorry, excuse me. You want to go to see them? Are you hungry? Come on, let's go. As long as if we, if you're gonna eat with me, fine. Well, I've had some, but I'll tell you something. The chicken one is really good. It's like chicken pot pie inside that pastry. Mm. Or yeah, the chicken. Pot <laughs> yeah, pie. These are like empanadas, if we're saying. Also, like this They're is not a, really empanadas. What is that pastry that's around them, lovely? Any of the pasties? What is it? Just crust. I was wondering. Short crust pastry. Mm. I'm not a baker. It's pretty obvious. This sounds good. This one a piece of spinach with... and ricotta. Mm. You like that, yeah? The vegetarian one. Spinach. If, well, do you have a one with spinach and um, some meat in it? 
No, just the no. steak. Which is the most popular one you have here? Just the traditional steak one. Mm. The traditional steak. Oh, this steak and ale? That could be good. Is this, are we going to get something else to eat? Or you? Yeah, we can do, yeah. But uh, you, right now you need to try this for your hair. You, you sure? Okay, let me get try the... Try one. I tell you, you won't to be disappointed. Let me get the regular one. Let me get a, yeah, let, let me, me get, get, yeah, get the regular steak one, so. That way. Most popular, the traditional one, yeah. I guess. Medium size or large? From a medium or large? Medium, medium, medium. That's the medium, guys. Looks large. <laughs> yeah, trust me, it's so filling, though. It's so filling. Right. It's like, All right. Is that cash or card? That's going to be a ca uh, card. One second. Let's try this, guys. How do you eat this? Like right here? Just, I would I usually like rip them in two like Come this. On. So you can get the good stuff in the middle. Yep. Okay. Oh, gosh. All right. All right. Try that. All right. There you go, guys. And it cold, it keeps well. It's lovely cold as well, isn't it? Sorry? They're good cold. Yeah, hot or cold. Right? Hot or cold. Some good stuff, mm. right? His first Cornish pasty. Yes. Yes. Good. Never heard, doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> good stuff, right? Mm. You want one? Mm. You know what? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Join me a pretty cheese steak. Get something later. But it has like potato it. in it. It's really it's very appetizing. Thank you. <laughs> mm. I absolutely love the shopping here. Like you go down here, you see there's a lot of craft stores, antique stores, lovely jewelry, like little. Uh, there's a lot of Indian stories in there. Mm -hmm. so I should have brought back the police booth for those silver stories. Yeah. You can spend hours going around. There's a lovely smell of incense mm -hmm. around there. Mm -hmm. If you can get it. I, I smell it right now, yeah. But let me take care of you because I want to talk to you a little bit about the senior architecture. Alright, let's go. In Bath. All right. So this is the beginning. This is the prototype of every building in Bath coming up. This mm -hmm. was Okay, so we spoke about this very briefly earlier on. There was a period of what was known as hospital tourism here in Bath, a bit like Lourdes. You probably don't know where Lourdes is, but that's where um, the sick go to be healed. Mm -hmm. Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception appeared there. Mm -hmm. People, there was this... Doctors began to believe that there, there was healing properties in these bubbling hot springs in Bath. Mm -hmm. So the rich were all bathing in the waters. And the Queen arrived, Queen Anne. Came in 1702 to be cured of all illnesses like dropsy. You're struggling with the camera and he's eating here, the blessing. Anyway, these rich people were arriving, the royal family and lords and ladies, to bathe in the spring, the natural spring waters. So the poor were starting to get a bit annoyed because they were like, hold on here, I'm sick too. Where can we be? And the rich didn't want to share their bath water with the poor in the area. So they hired a man called John Wood the Elder to build a bath townhouse for the poor. This was the result. He built this especially for the poor. And would you believe up until the 1960s, I think it's early 70s actually, you could still be prescribed by the doctors a day in the spa here in Bath if you had any rheumatoid arthritis or any diseases like that. So this was the prototype for every house you see in Bath. Because John with the Elder built this for the poor and the rich started to look at it and they thought, okay, we like this stone, we like this style of architecture, which is Palladian style architecture. I want my house like that too. So that became a prerequisite for every home in Bath to be built with this Bath stone. And that Bath stone quarry was owned by a man called Ralph Allen. A very wealthy man who would restructure the postal service in this city. So he, it is now a requirement of every building in Bath to be made of Bath stone. So this was the original, but John Wood the Elder's masterpiece is coming up, you guys. So we're going to head up the most exclusive part of town. We're going to go up to what's called the Circus and the Royal Crescent. This place is special. Wait till I show you. Georgians. Okay. So the Georgians are George I, George II, George III, the famous last king of the Americas, mm. who met King George III of England and George IV. Not my favorite period in British history. They were very opulent. It was all about excess. It was about showing off to your neighbors. Men were required to be exceptionally heavy set. And um, the fatter you were, the sexier you were, oh, essentially. Oh, my type of people. <laughs> because 
that implied that they could afford more food, that they were rich. Mm -hmm. Us ladies had the white, white makeup. The whiter our makeup was implied the less likely we were to be working on the fields mm -hmm. with the peasants. So we wore the, the big French wigs and the big hoop skirts. Um, it was all about showing off. And one of the features on the buildings, look up here, do you see all the excessive amount of chimneys? Oh, wow! The building here, it's ridiculous. You can see, you see some There's up like there. Like 12 or 13 of them on some of them. Right. We'll get a better view up here. We'll, do you okay. know what? Let's just get past this construction okay. site and then we'll have a better idea. We can go back here. This is my favorite street, by the way. Well, all my gay friends love this. You're on the corner of Queen Square and Gay Street. Isn't that terrific? <laughs> Queen Square and Gay Street. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, the names of the buildings are quite fun. John Wood the Elder had a, a big job. He basically built this bath like a movie set. Mm. He was responsible for all the fronts of the buildings and had to make sure they were all aligned and exactly the same. Anyone who bought the buildings then were responsible for the interiors. But he needed help naming the streets. Because you see all these little side streets as well. Yeah. And there's one great story and I love it. He bursts into a council meeting one day. And the council is in session. And he said, excuse me, sir, excuse me. And the, the councillor said to him, quiet, John Wood. So off he went in his merry way. And he put up Wood Street, John Street, and Quiet Street. <laughs> quiet John Wood Street. It's just, I think that's pretty fun. Um, this is Queen Square. The excessive amount of chimneys were intentional. Again, a sign of wealth. Because the more chimneys you had in your building implied, the more coal you could afford. And coal would have been one of the most expensive commodities in Britain. Oh, you have your charger. I thought you were coming down and charge. Would it be more of the expensive commodities in Britain? Here's another feature. You see these blocked out windows? Right. So a tax man came in here in the 1700s. He decided if you could afford a building that side, you could afford to pay tax on your windows. <gasps> Absolutely. <laughs> Some people are like, you know Some what, people, we ain't got three windows, we got one now. We got one now, right? <laughs> British, the great tradition of British ta tax evasion, they boarded up their windows. And that's what we believe in this country, we use the expression daylight robbery. Oh. I think it's the equivalent to your highway robbery. Wow, yeah, okay. Robbery. So I want to bring you up here to meet the most photographed man in Bath. My old buddy, I was just chatting to him earlier on, he's had a bout of COVID, so he looks a bit shook. Actually, there is a weekend, I just missed it, it was last week, where people from all over the world come and they dress as if they were members of a Jane Austen novel. And they have a huge Jane Austen weekend, they go for lunches together and they walk around Bath dressed in periodic dress from the 1700s. My friend Dawn desperately wants us to go. Oh, oh, there we are. Mr. Bennett. This is Mr. Bennett. This is my pride and prejudice friend. Yeah. The long suffering husband of Mrs. Bennett. How's oh, her nerves? Suffering her nerves. Are they still at her? Uh, no, because I've shot her. You did kill her in the Bang. end. I knew you right would, sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my buddy, Mr. Bennett. How are you doing, Mr. Bennett? I'm beginning of pride well, and yeah. prejudice, Mr. No, Bennett. I was only teasing you when I said I didn't shoot her really. She's around. She's around. <laughs> Mrs. Yeah. Bennett has a She's nervous here. disposition and she has she, five daughters oh yeah and at the beginning of that novel she says I'm a clever boy aren't I you are a clever boy five. and he had to find <laughs> five husbands for his daughters yeah so as you heard five said, a day do you want to come through we let yeah. these ladies through so sorry ladies come ahead how are you <laughs> all right hello my golly, don't you look wonderful, ladies? <laughs> yes. Just like yeah. your daughters, huh? No, that's not my daughter. <laughs> His oh. wife said it's a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a large fortune should be in want of a wife. I wish I was born in Georgian times. Well, you've been drinking. I would never have had to work a small you've bit been drinking. Always a bit of a drink, me. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, my old buddy. Yeah. Just get up, remind me of a. Um, what is it, the Ghost of Christmas Past? Oh, Charles Dickens. Charles yeah, Dickens. What's his, yeah. is it called? Yeah, what's he's well, periodically, I suppose. Dickens what is the story Victorian. called? I forgot what it's called. It, um, a Christmas card. Oh, there it is. Okay. And you see all the beautiful houses here. They're all exactly the same. <laughs> so this is where the money was. Now this is where the money is. Okay. Oh, it's still here. Okay. Nicholas <laughs> Cage lived up here, actually. Wow. So you can see some of the... The they're real estate. Not too bad to be. I mean, compared to London prices, they're actually. Wow, this is one million. It's not bad at all. Not that I have a million to buy it, but you know what I mean. Six hundred fifty thousand pound. 
Well, if you want to just relax and be ducked if off. You want to have a cool costume. <laughs> This one right here. I this one is a what? Well, that's bizarre. Right, right. This one right here. Not that I can afford it. Two baths, four bedroom, three receptions, one million pound. That's beautiful now, Westbury. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms. Next week I'll be busy. Oh, okay. Sure, I'm here next week, and I'd love to see them in action. Maybe I'll come and do a video on it. Here you go, guys. So that okay, festival she was talking about is actually next week. It's next week. Yeah. September 14th, where she did say next week was going to be busy. So now we know why. Wow. Isn't this amazing? This is beautiful. I like how it's set up here. This is the circus. So circus is taken from the Latin word circo. Circus meaning circle. Mm -hmm. A roundabout or intersection area. Every single building. Is even. Is the exact same the face the door, dimensions and faces the each other. The exact same circumference as Stonehenge. Oh. Yeah, he was uh, obsessed with the earth and the sun and the moon. He was a Freemason as well, so there's a lot of Masonic symbolism. Right. And symbols around him, but this is. Oh, this is the former home of Nicholas Cage here. Where, this one right here? Number seven. Number seven. He used to get tortured by all the students and the university students to be coming up and knocking on his door at night. In the end, I think he left a rather large tax bill after him, actually. <laughs> he lived in there. You can see the interiors of this properties on a lot of the state agents. Now a lot of them have been actually converted into apartments as well. It doesn't have the seven mark on it. Yeah, he took it down apparently, as if students wouldn't be able to work out he was between six and eight, but anyway, thinking that would deter or, them. Or perhaps someone took it, maybe? Maybe, maybe so. I think it was really nice in there. Is it empty? I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure. But I mean, can you imagine the amount of tourists up here? This would be hard. You don't get a lot of peace here, you know? Right. A lot of privacy for your very expensive homes. Now, this was John of the Elder. Now, he had just passed away. And the foundations are pretty much laid on this. So his son, John Wood the Younger, took over. And then, he built the Royal Crescent up here. I'll show you the Crescent, built like in a Crescent shape of the moon as well. Like a crescent moon, and this is magnificent because this is the top of the town. And the Georgians were obsessed with symmetry, dimensions, they were also obsessed with fresh air. I wonder, did Nicolas Cage, I'm just jumping around, but I wonder, did Nicolas Cage uh, do a uh, what's the word? A moved here after he filmed National Treasure. Oh. I'm not quite sure the years he lived here. I'm just trying to see what the excess is for. 450,000. Two bedroom, first floor flat, second bed. That's not bad, is mm. it? Seriously. Sorry. I mean, the two bedroom in Maybe London get a, right now uh, is 450,000. What do you think? Is something happening here that people want to move out? or? No, I just feel like it's... Uh, just that London is soaring property prices. It's insane. I mean, they can't sustain that property market there. It's crazy. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, this standard price, but it's the same in the US now as well. <laughs> standard price of an apartment in London now is the cheapest would be 200,000 at least. Well, uh, one bedroom as far as I can see. Same thing in- Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure you will. It's similar in the United States, yeah. It's insane. Well, it we're talking the... pounds and dollars, so it's a difference. So and that yeah, too. that's where you make your money is the right. cities, isn't it? You know, so it's kind of six of one and a half a dozen the other. Right, we're just going to show you over here now, my lovelies, and we can finish up at the top of the town. Right. Queen Victoria didn't like Bath, actually. She came here one time, and she was a young princess at the time. Mm -hmm. And there was a bit of excitement and a bit of buzz about it, about her being here. And she was only a young little thing. Mm -hmm. And she overheard some of the people saying, Oh my God, did you see the princess? She's got very fat ankles. She was horrified, she was so upset. And it had a lasting effect because it's a story about her going on a train one time past Bath 
And she's like, close the curtains for I shall never look on that city again. She must have made some lasting impression on her, bless her. Now this is a periodically furnished house. This is number one, the Royal Crescent. And it's like a museum so you can visit mm -hmm. inside. And people who live, see how they lived. This is magnificent. Let me show you down here. All right. Oh, all right, guys. It's a semicircle. This is the Royal Crescent. Wow. That overlooks this beautiful little park here. And wow. you see that there's a dip here. See, there's a dip there that was yeah. to keep the animals and the sheep out and the grazing because this is like a private garden here as well. But these are just magnificent. And that's the architectural masterpiece of John Wood the Younger, ladies and gents. There you the go, most guys. desired property in Bath. This right here, this the one Crescent. Here. Any one of the Crescent here. Wow. Lovely, it's not to the view you have at the yeah. top of the Really cool place to just enjoy the day. And today we're lucky the sun came out to Hi, see. Right? Yeah. But well, anyways guys, I want to say thank you for watching this video. Come on away from me. And if you want to see this beautiful woman, she actually has her own channel and you can book her for private tours, all right? Link in the description. Link in the description. Okay, if you have not seen a private tour from her, go watch my Jack the Ripper tour where I almost fainted by the things she showed me. Going down, imagine a deep dark alley. You know what? If you ain't see it, I'm gonna leave it here. See you in the next video. Yo. That's it. Uh